So, uh, hi everybody, my name is Anthony Bird, um, developer of um, S4. A um, little bit about me. Um, I've, not, I've been doing uh, web development really since I left high school. Um, I've been working, doing PHP, Node.js, um, a Laravel contributor. Um, I've also done a fair bit of WordPress contributing uh, throughout my career, but I tend not to talk about that too much. Um, I'm an ex-Apple developer. Um, and I've also developed a project called VIPFS, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, it did quite well on the um, IPFS uh, Reddit. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm the developer of ID.io, which I'm kind of trying to create my own version of AWS um, using like purely alt tech. Uh, so that's kind of a bit of a challenge. Um, and I run a delivery company called Teleport. Um, I'll quickly touch on that right now because um, Teleport is really what funded um, S4. Um, so basically, I run a delivery company uh, in Austin, Texas, um, and we, as you can see, we've got a handful of quite, handful of quite large clients. And basically, all the kind of income I generate off this, this is my like four nine to five, my thing that was what I do every single day. This is really what allows me to kind of make projects like S4 and VIPFS. So a little plug there. Um, so great. So what is S4? Um, S4 is designed to be 100% compatible S3 storage access through Tor and distributed using IPFS. Um, it's 100% uh, yeah, compatible with S3 and all their existing uh, uh, SDKs and whatnot. Uh, it's decentralized, anonymous, and it's obviously permanent because it uses IPFS. So I'll touch on the architecture quickly. So the way I've designed S4, um, I, want, I had a few kind of design specifications. Um, I wanted it to not require any third party or intermediaries, meaning that using typical HTTP domains is, is off the table uh, because that would require us having to register a domain with a third party. Um, so the so Tor is heavily used throughout. Um, data is ingressed into an S4 server uh, over Tor, and that can be done through Tor browser just by a standard user, or your code can write can write data to the oh, pardon me uh, to the S4 server. Then when you write data into the server, you, you can create buckets just like in S3. Each of your buckets get paired off with a key in IPFS. And every time you update the data in the buckets, uh, the bucket will get published using that key. What this means is that you can, create, you can address any of the content stored on your S4 server uh, using this kind of URL here where it should be the key of the bucket. And then this will be the path of the file that you've stored in the bucket. So I guess a question a lot of you are asking is, is a bit of a um, quite difficult or complicated to communicate with this S4 server from you know, all these kind of programming languages. So how do we achieve this? It's achieved with a sidecar container. So this slide that you're seeing here represents an example application using um, S4. So if we had an application, uh, I've got a node example here. I've titled it My App. We have a node um, application, and we want to store the data. Uh, we want to store, say, images um, on S4 instead of S3. How do we do that? So we run our two containers, our Node.js uh, container here, and our S4 client, which acts as the sidecar container. The code inside the um, the code inside the node app. You must, you should surely will be able to recognize a lot of this code here. We import the official Amazon AWS SDK and we even instantiate the S3 class of that. But notice here, the endpoint is pointing to our local um, S4 client, which is this container here, as you can see. And we also provide it with the access key and secret, uh, secret access key as well. And we can just con we can use all of the existing um, AWS methods that the, the SDK provides us completely. There's no other modification has to be used. But when I put this object into the bucket, it will go over Tor into S4 and then be published to IPFS. So then on to reading data. How do we read the data from, I, from S4? Um, again, I had a few specifications on how I wanted to make this work, um, namely the fact that I, I didn't want to have um, didn't want to use JavaScript. Um, the beauty of S4 is that the data gets requested over HTTP gateways, meaning that if you don't want to use JavaScript and you just want to have a plain image tag, you can have a plain image tag and that, th that image will be loaded over S4 using a public gateway. This also allows for human readable file paths. Uh, this bucket, this, is, this hash only references the bucket. Therefore, all the content is human readable, as you see here. 
So I've said a lot there. Let's try uh, and do a live demo where we're going to actually create an S4 server. Um, if anyone's interested in following along with this, you can go to this URL right here, ideainc forward slash S4, and you can follow along. It only requires four uh, commands to actually start up the server. So let's give it a go. So if we head over to the GitHub here, this is the S4 GitHub repository. I will just get the URL and I'm my temporary directory here. And I'm gonna run the command uh, git clan S4. And we'll cd into the S4 repository. And once you're in the repository, uh, first thing we have to do is we have to make a onion address for our server. We have to have a private key. So we can do that using this command here. Um, again, this is all provided in the readme of the repo. So it's pretty much just copy and pasteable. If we run that command, what happens? Great. It's generated us this onion address here. Now this onion address is referencing, uh, or this, this is the onion address for our like local S4 server that I'm going to run now in Docker. Then to get the project started, simply as run the command docker pose up. Great, and it looks like it's all starting there. Brilliant. So what have we done here? We have just, we've now fully set up our S4 server in just those four commands. It's as simple as that. So I'll give it a moment to boot up and it looks like Tor has bootstrapped properly. So if I open up Tor browser, it might take a second because the domain needs to be published and stuff like that. But after about five minutes, that URL that you just created will become accessible over Tor browser. So we'll give that a moment. And let that load. This is, might take a second. So what we'll do is we'll continue on with the rest of the presentation. So let's. So now we have this S4 server set up, and or right now it's running on my uh, on my laptop. We can go ahead and assume that this is, say, some server which is somewhere on the planet. Um, obviously, it's the actual IP address is unknown because it's using Tor. So how would our application actually write data to that? So I'll give a quick example. Or, in the root of the S4 repository, there's a directory called example. And this example directory is the example I just gave in the presentation, demonstrating S4 working with the official AWS SDK. First, uh, let's nano. We have to quickly update the ENV and give it our S4 address. And we'll exit that. Then we run the command docker compose up minus D. And now we'll pop that. Good. So that now is booting up uh, what would be, which would be like an application, which might write S to S4 in production. So let's actually test and see if our, um, if we can, uh, now we're going to run this block of code here, which hopefully we'll be able to create us a bucket on our server and upload a file into that server. So I'll run the command here. Again, all of these commands are in the readme of the, um, of the repository and it looks like we've successfully created our bucket and we've successfully uploaded a file into that bucket. So this here represents how we can upload content from our application into S4. And now this PDF file, example.pdf, which is uploaded into the um, into S4, hopefully now will be accessible uh, over IPFS. So let's see if that's happened. Let's put out that. Here we go. So uh, Minio is like an open source version of um, AWS S3. Um, it's all the API methods are 
uh, compatible with S3. So I'm just gonna quickly try and log into it now. And hopefully we'll be able to find our file in there. And then I'll also be able to show you how you can actually access, read that file, sorry, um, over IPFS. So wait till we've logged in. There we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing the equivalent of logging into the F4 server. And as you can see here, this is the example file that I've just uploaded um, through uh, using the example, using the example code. But the obvious question is how would I then access this file over IPFS? Now there's a drip, there's a bucket which isn't published to IPFS called system. And inside the system directory, all of the hashes to those keys are accessible here in this file. So this this here, this hash represent is the key that this bucket was published under. What that means is, is if I go to ipfs.io forward slash ipns. Now this won't load straight away, obviously, because the um, because it's going to take a moment to actually find that bucket. But what, what happened is once after that bucket started propagated over the IPFS network, you'll be able to navigate to that URL and also be able to navigate to forward slash example.pdf. And that will, that will then load that file um, then over the IPFS network. What this allows is this allows us to store data on IPFS without requiring developers to actually change any of their code. Um, I think there's a lot of great projects in the IPFS community right now but I don't think it's massively realistic to expect um, large, large corporate companies and development teams to change, uh, to change their, um, to change their code to kind of fit with IPFS. It makes far more sense um, that we, we make IPFS and augment any of those changes that are necessary. Um, and that's what I've managed to do here um, using this kind of sidecar container system. This allows developers to keep their existing code, but then write the data to IPFS under the hood. With actually with no changes whatsoever required to their code. So that's pretty much everything I had today.